And then, as just to recap, we created a very small program that allows a worm to move over the screen. I mean, not the worm, but we are moving the, the, the worm. Um, and the, the program is fairly simple. So after a few introductory variables here and uh, some initialization, we basically get the character from the keyboard. This is all part of the NCurses library we saw. We clear the screen, and then we first print where the head was last time. This is basically the, the body of, the, of our baby worm. And then we are able to move, which basically just changes those coordinates to then print the head of the worm. Okay, so maybe, I mean, in light of my uh, recent comments uh, just now, I, I should basically just say that this is the heads. So um, draw heads. And over here, we have the draw body. Body, right? I see there also a typo here. Pressed by user. OK. Um, so if we have that, we can execute it. Um, and as we said, what is going on here? Um, uh, there. I, I, I interchangeably use lots of keyboards, and I constantly have to work out which one I'm using. So um, if we compile it um, to W1, I think we used, uh, we also said that we need to link the library. Today we'll see a little bit more about linking. And we know that the library is called NCurses. So NCurses is not a standard library, so it's not immediately linked with everything we uh, might um, built here, but NCurses, we just, uh, it is a library that exists in the system, so we can just add it. And if we then execute, oops, if we then execute, then we can move this worm around, right? And if we press a Q, this is what is written here, um, it exits the screen. Okay, now this is not much of a game, right? I can, I can draw things and this will probably occupy me for five minutes if I want to uh, kill some time, but not much more. We need to make it a little bit more challenging. And as we probably know from the game, um, which, by the way, some of you remarked uh, is also called snakes or snake. I'm not entirely sure whether worm or snake. doesn't matter. Uh, the, the, ad, ad, the, the game is actually eating something that appears on the screen. So that's what we're going to add first. We're going to make the program, which you know started as a one-screen simple program, we're going to make it little by little a little bit more complex. And to, it be, to be able to make somewhere randomly on the screen pop up some foods, we first have to use a function which randomly selects something. And for that, we will use uh, another standard library. Let's put that over here. Um, which is a C library, and if you import or include a C library in C++, it usually starts with a C, and then you use the, the, the normal name that you had in the C days, .h you had, but the .h you leave out. You know, so, and the random function, I believe, comes from uh, stdlib, stdlib, right? And here we are already right um, for the rand function. Now the rand function, fiction, function. Uh, for the rand function, we basically um, return a variable and we need to somehow scale this. We'll do that later, but now we have this rand function to our availability. So we can, for instance, randomly on the screen by selecting a random number between zero and the number of columns or zero and the number of lines on our screen, we can place a food, uh, a piece of food. Now, what we then also need is the coordinates of the food, of course. So also there, just like we have the coordinates of the worm, which are x and y, also that I should um, probably coordinates of the worm. We should have the food coordinates. So I'll do that. I'll name it food x, which I'll also have as an integer. We can initialize it as zero and food y which will also do exactly the same. So these are the coordinates of the foods to be eaten by the war. Um, right. 
So what do we do now? We basically have to place the food somewhere. And initially we have to place it already when the program starts, somewhere on the screen. So let's start with that. So, do, and, and this kind of shows you how um, the RAND function works. So if I say RAND, it will basically um, create a, a random number between zero and an extremely big number. Um, and we need to co constrain it to the number of, for x, what was x again? x is the number of columns. So in this direction, right, horizontal. Um, and in able to be having a number, we could do multiple things. We could scale it down, for instance. Uh, however, a very simple trick is to use modulo, right? So we divide it and the rest is basically um, uh, given by our range. So if we do modulo uh, columns, um, columns minus one even, Right, because columns, we don't want we don't want to place a piece of food on columns because columns is just outside the screen, and the screen goes from zero to columns minus one, as you can see here. Um, so this will basically put the the x coordinate of the food into a random position between zero and columns minus one, just because of this uh, modal operator, right? Because normally this would have been a bigger number. Because of modulo, we constrict it between zero and uh, the number of columns. And that's what we'll do exactly for food y, except that there we don't go for columns, but for lines. And we saw last time already that columns and lines are things that you get for free from this library. Right? Also there, place the food on this screen. <coughs> Okay, so let's see if this works already. We did already quite a bit of coding. So let's compile and see if we get something. Oh, we don't get something. Why? Exactly, I was too eager uh, to, to already try whether I, I made any mistakes. I didn't make any mistakes because it compiled. But of course, you're right, we didn't draw the foods. Um, We'll, we have to do this after the screen is cleared, right? Otherwise, if we draw it here, then the screen will be cleared and we won't show our foot. So we'll have to do this afterwards. In fact, this is probably better added here. So this is all responsible for drawing our worm. And similarly, here we'll draw the foot. Um, and when we draw the foot, we basically use exactly the same function. So we move to a certain position and add a character. And this character will add not at yx, because that's the position of the worm, we'll add it at foot y, foot x. Um, and then we'll have to also have a character that represents our foot. I don't know. Let's put an x there, I would say. And this should be able to draw our foot. Let's see. Let's see, first of all, no, that's first compile. And then we start, and there is indeed some food. Now, the thing that we have to add still is the functionality that if this worm is trying to eat this food, it should disappear, first of all. It should not overwrite our worm. Um, and it should, it should pop up somewhere else. That's how the game works, right? So in that case, we have to first, over here, um, do some tests. And there our handy if then uh, or if else uh, thing uh, should work over here. So first we have to test whether the coordinates of the head of our worm are exactly as the co exactly the coordinates of our foods. And the way that works, we, we already know from last time, we can we have to test for two times uh, two things simultaneously. So food, we can here go for x immediately equals x, right? So if our um, if the coordinate of our food x is exactly the coordinate of our warm x, and the same for y. Then we'll have to do something. And what we'd have to do is basically change the food coordinates. And then we basically have to do exactly the same of what we did uh, before. So food x will become some random number. Um, 
and we'll do, do exactly the same trick as we did before. Oops, there. So food y lines. So if uh, so the head is being drawn. If the head is exactly on the on the foot coordinates, then the foot will be redrawn as well. Make sense? Will it work? Let's see. Yeah, oh, it compiles. Let's see if it works. So there we go. Our worm is going to the foot. By the way, the coordinates are exactly the same as last time. If you see, um, this has a particular uh, reason. In this case, we don't care about that. But if you really want a truly pseudo-random variable, you need to uh, put a seed in first. But that, that's something for later. But as you can see, this works. So the, the, the worm is moving around the screen and eating this piece of food. And this is already much more satisfying, I think, as a game. I could do this all day. Um, but what we've seen also is that a lot of things happen now. So the, the program is, you know, where it used to be one screen is about two screens now for sure, right? We have added a lot more functionality um, and uh, a lot more things have popped up. Now, let's do one more thing to make the code a lot more harder to read. And we're only, you know, we spent, I think, about an hour or so with this code already uh, or just an hour. It's not much in coding time. Um, what another thing functionality for a game is that you need to have a score, a high score and a score. Is that a question? Yes. Random function. Mm -hmm. We are calling down. How does it um, select like what's yeah. the range of numbers? Um, I'm not entirely sure. This is something that you could uh, look in the reference or std uh, lib. It's a standard library. I would say it's probably an integer. Or does anyone know? So it's basically from zero to uh, a large number, to an extremely large number. And how does it work? Yeah. Is your next question? Yes, I'm wondering. So basically, the, the, I mean, the reason, I mean, the reason, first of all, why we're getting here always the same coordinates, right? So if I, oops, if I uh, start here, the coordinates will be always the same, as you can see. I can quit. I can start again. The coordinates are always there. That has some reason. The, the reason is the random function should be, first of all, seeded with a truly random variable. And in computers, usually, uh, a lot of things are being taken for that. Now, all of this is not truly random. This is, that's why I'm calling all of this pseudo-random. So it's a, a, a random number between zero and a large number, so several billions. Um, and randomly, a number is being picked there. But this, this random picking is uh, going according to a heuristic that can be forecasted or can be uh, delivered. Yes. But this is a lecture on its own uh, and, and one where I don't really know all the full details either. But what I would have had to do if I wanted to have something surprising in terms of coordinates now, I would have had uh, to use the seed function. And there, a random variable that has to do with the time that is currently there, microseconds including, with lots of things that you probably can't forecast that simply, you will basically be able to um, put a random number that is a lot more surprising there. And it does change, as you can see. So the random number, or our foot, in this case for our, our game, does jump randomly over the screen within a certain range, between zero and columns, between zero and lines. For this game, it doesn't matter whether this is a truly random or a very nice pseudo-random number. We just want to have somewhere a random coordinate. So we don't have situations where um, it's going to give us a very large modulo, like the result of the uh, position is going to be so large that the uh, food is now going to be out of the screen. Or something. No, because of the modulo function. The modulo function guarantees us that it will be between 0 and columns minus 1, or lines minus 1. And since it's an integer, and modulo, and also division, by the way, work on integer numbers, you won't have any problems there. Unless you were expecting for the integer division to have something with, um, with digits after the dot, right? So that is all cut off for, uh, for integer division, as we saw. Yeah. Okay. Good. So what did you say? Oh, right. We want to score. 
we want to add a score. Um, and also there, we basically just have to use a variable. Right? So what we want is, okay, what would be a good uh, variable type? What would be a good type here for the score? An integer, I think. I think you're right there. I mean, an integer, of course, implies that we can also have minus something. Maybe this is something that we want. Maybe not. Who's in favor for unsigned? Ah, it's still not half. Sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll just go for us. For uh, Maybe we can have penalties and then you can get minus 20 as a score. We'll see. So we'll have um, our player score as an extra variable. As you can see, the number of variables is starting to heap up as well. That's exactly what I'm trying to do now because uh, later on we want to show that we can simplify this with functions. Good. So we have our player score. And the player score, what happens is it's zero. And of course, we have to increase it by one every time the worm eats the food, right? Because that is an effort and that's something that we have to reward the player with. And this is exactly happening here, as you probably already know, right? So we change the coordinates of the food and then exactly the same uh, part, so it's uh, between the, uh, or after the if. So if the worm ate the food, that's basically exactly what this is. Uh, then we change the food coordinates, but also we marking goes away. Uh, we increment the score. Well, actually, what what do yeah. this does not require any any uh, um, comments? I think score plus plus. If you know C plus plus, you know that this means that our score is incremented by one. Okay. However, we don't know what our score will be, right? We could print this at the end when the when the person exits the program. For that, we could, for instance, use uh, C out. However, we can also, and this is, I think, a lot more motivating, we can print this right in the game. However, if we print it in the game, we have to make sure that our food is not printed on top of our score uh, um, function. That is one problem that we have to face. So let's put our... Uh, our uh, score, what shall we say, at the top? No, at the bottom. So if we do it at the bottom, we'll have to do minus 2, right? So our y position will go one less. So the, the foot will never appear at a total bottom. And we'll do the same for the worm, because our worm can't move over our high score, right? So also our worm, we have to make sure that also there, the worm can never move less than lines minus 2. So the last line, the bottom line of the screen, we reserve for showing the high score. And we do that everywhere where our food gets changed or our worm gets changed. So wherever something uh, gets drawn. And this should, this should be it, I think. Okay, so this is for drawing our food. And now we have to draw our high score or our score. I keep on saying high score, but that's something for later, perhaps. We'll see. So if we draw the score, there is one thing that we haven't seen yet, and that is up until now we have been printing just characters everywhere on the screen. We haven't printed, like we had this nice see out function in the beginning of the course. This is something we don't have. We have, uh, haven't seen really a function yet that is able to present us with um, a string, because that's what we want. We want to show here score, colon, and then our high score. And then we want functionality also that represents the score so we want a string, and for this, this is something that we'll see later, we will need to initialize something else, or we need to, another, to have another variable, and we'll use for that, to keep things very, very simple, um, a, let's see how much, I would say 80, that will definitely be enough, um, string for displaying score. Now, a string is basically, I think I already saw, said this once, um, a, a, a string or a, 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 an array of characters. The characters we know by now, an array of characters is basically just somewhere in memory we don't reserve the space for one character or one byte or eight bits. No, in this case, we reserve 80 of those. And as I said, in this, in this case, we reserve 80 of those, we don't initialize them. We're going to do something uh, with that later on. So that means that here we reserved something of, um, of type character string, 
uh, of char character array, and we basically have 80 of those, and the last one, so going from 0 to 79, and we will end, or we have to end the last one always with a 0, if we want to use this as a C string. This will come later, when we see arrays, then things will get um, also a little more interesting, but as with many things, we'll see things, and then later on we'll understand why we use those. So if we want to draw the score, we'll have to first create a string that says score colon and then our score. And for that, we oh we have to first add a different library. Let's do that first. And also there, it's exactly the same. We'll use a library, which is quite standard from the C days, which is STDIO. And we'll use this for um, sprintf. That's the function that we'll use for creating our string. So we're going to fill those 80 characters with a particular string that starts with the score is, and then the number for our score. And also that is a standard library that we don't have to um, take care of while compiling and building our code. Right, so now we, I think we have everything. So we, um, the function that we use is sprintf, is basically printing something into a string. And this is a C string, the C string that we saw earlier, which we called str. Right? And what we're going to print there is something that is a string. We can represent it as a string like this. So we can say score, colon, for instance, a space. And then we uh, use something that some of you that uh, know C already know, this percentage i, which is a parameter that we can then specify. And percentage i means an integer is going to follow. And then we basically print our score. So now we filled our string with the characters capital S, C, O, R, E, colon, space. And then this nice function is going to take care of putting this integer into a nice string. If we hadn't had this, and we basically would have just um, used the MV at character function, for instance, and we put, of the, uh, put score in here, terrible things would have happened. You know, so, so we would have, uh, for instance, not had the score as an integer, it would have been represented as a character. And as we saw last time, this could be anything, right? So this is the one and only way to represent a string properly. And then we need another, another function to visualize that string, because we have that string somewhere in memory, we need to print it still out on, uh, on the screen. This is basically printing this particular thing into that string, that's why it's called sprintf. We need to visualize the string on the, scre on the screen, and for that um, there are multiple ways we could do this. One thing is uh, we can use move, which is a function from ncurses, so we move to a particular uh, uh, position. In this case, we go for lines minus one as the y position, um, and as the x position, how we can start maybe at place one, right? So move to the bottom, and there we use then uh, a particular function to not. Uh, print a character on the screen, but put a print an, an, or add an entire string on the screen, which is called add string, which is also from n curses. So print string str. And for that, we just have to put str there. So now if everything goes well, and if I have everything remembered correctly, um, it should uh, print the food. After printing the food, it should also print the score that we have. And since the score is being taken care of here and is incrementing from zero. I hope that this all will work. It compiles, that's already good. And as soon as we start moving, you can see that we have a score being zero. We're very unhappy about that, but as soon as we eat food, it's being incremented. Right? And this is already much better as a game. I mean, this is something that would entertain me for at least 10 minutes now. Um, what we'll do later is we'll add some other bells and whistles like color. And the only thing that is missing here from the traditional game is that our worm should also get longer and longer as it eats more food. Now, this is something that we'll do later because 
we officially haven't seen arrays yet and we need an array to represent the coordinates of the worm. However, what we've already seen now is that this worm game that used to be very simple has become quite long. Uh, so we, we have at least one, two, I would say two and a half, maybe even three screens long. So we expanded this functionality, of course, but we paid the price for that. Because now we have, I would say, a program that is not that easy to read anymore. And the only way we can deal with that is with functions. And that's what we'll see uh, in the second part of this lecture.